the president said yesterday about this uh, this treatment, hydroxychloroquine, which is uh, recommended for malaria, but not for COVID-19. There's our US correspondent, Amanda Walker. Just remind us of, of what the president said about that and the reaction. Yeah, I, there were gasps, audible gasps in the room of reporters when he volunteered the information that he is actually taking hydroxychloroquine himself and has been for over a week. And he sort of relished the shock value of that. He knew that there would be a lot of controversy because this is a drug that is unproven when it comes to the treatment of coronavirus. Treatment of coronavirus, that's a very important specification here because that's what the studies have been into so far. Now, as far as we know, the president who's being tested every day does not have coronavirus. He has no symptoms and he's taking this drug as a preventative measure. Now, as far as we're aware, there are no studies about its efficacy as a preventative drug. But for months now, he's really been pushing hydroxychloroquine. And back in April was really the peak of that when he said, take it. What do you have to lose? There was a lot of criticism then, especially when the studies started coming out. One study in particular uh, in veterans in Virginia said that it actually increased the mortality rate in coronavirus patients. And numerous studies since then have basically said that it has no impact, that there is no evidence that it helps, uh, that it treats coronavirus. But despite that, what you see now is the president going to great lengths to prove that he is right. Now, there's been uh, criticism from medical experts saying that it's irresponsible for him to use his platform to say to people, take this drug, when there are some potentially very harmful side effects. The Food and Drug Administration has said that it shouldn't be taken outside of a hospital setting, uh, that it has potential impact on the heart rhythm uh, and people with kidney disease. So a whole host of complex medical issues potentially, but that hasn't stopped the president doubling down on this today. A lot of our frontline workers take it because it possibly, and I think it does, but you know, it's, people are going to have to make up their own mind. Plus, it doesn't hurt people. It's been out on the market for 60 or 65 years for malaria, lupus, and other things. Uh, I think it gives you an additional level of safety, but you can ask many doctors are in favor of it. Many frontline workers won't go there unless they have the hydroxy. And so, again, this is an individual decision to make, but it's had a great reputation. And if it was somebody else other than me, people would say, gee, isn't that smart? Extraordinary. But, but are there questions being asked, Amanda, about how he's getting his hands on it? One imagines it's the President of the United States. Even if he wants to take an aspirin, it has to be run past his medical advisors, and he obviously can't nip down the local drugstore to get his hands on it. Exactly. So there's been a, this letter from a, a White House physician which was pretty vague and it was released after he said uh, yesterday that he was taking the drug. And it didn't talk about what he was prescribed, when he was prescribed, how much he's prescribed. It was purely um, that there'd been sort of an agreement between the physician and the president that uh, basically the benefits outweighed the risks. Um, Donald Trump has clearly heard stories from people and that was his answer when he was asked, OK, there's no scientific evidence supporting this. Where are you getting your evidence and your confidence, really, that this is something that you should be taking as the president of the United States and encouraging millions of Americans to take? And he simply said stories, people calling him, writing letters, saying that it was working for them. And that's what he's basing this on. So lots of criticism uh, from the scientific community who say it's not that simple. Also criticism, very unusually, from Fox News. Almost immediately after the president said he was taking this drug, one of their hosts said, if you are in an at-risk group, because a lot of their audience are much older, do not take this drug. It may kill you. So that was very unusual. The president didn't like that criticism, and he doesn't like the overall criticism that he's getting this wrong when it comes to this drug. So he's taken it to these new heights of actually saying that he's taking it himself. My goodness me. OK, Amanda, keep an eye on that cabinet meeting for us. Amanda Walker there. Now, a new global study suggests carbon emissions dropped by 17% at the height of the coronavirus lockdown. However, the professor leading the analysis has played down hopes it could help nations meet the 2015 Paris Agreement target of trying to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. They tell Sky News that would require a similar fall in carbon emissions every single year for decades. Sky Science correspondent Thomas Moore reports on the challenge of meeting climate targets after coronavirus. 
the return to work and in Manchester a new way of commuting. Roads are being given over to cyclists and pedestrians, safer than crowding together on public transport and a